Good evening. Actually, I should say good morning. It's, it's late. It's uh, 1 a.m. I'm still up researching along. I wanted to pick up where we left off with our Revit tutorial, building information modeling, navigation methods. Navigation methods uh, are pretty important. How we navigate through the software platform. Anyway, so as you can see, I have uh, I have the architectural tab open. I have the model shown in elevation, and you see this elevation view has view properties, just like uh, just like everything else. It's just like every other view. You can look at this from any perspective that you want. You can look at this from any perspective that you that you'd like to. Anyway, we're going to discuss the view cube. It's best to go to a three-dimensional view for a more realistic experience. All right, so we have the uh, the view cube up here in the upper right-hand corner of your canvas, with this uh, vacuum of space where even light can't escape, like Pandora's box, sort of like Pandora's box. Not even hope can escape. In some cases, not even hope. Not even hope can escape. In a black hole, not even light can escape. Anyway, all right, so the view cube. Navigation methods are important within this software platform because all these platforms behave the same way. They have the same type of gyroscope, if you will. This gimbal, this yaw, this pitch. In any event, navigation methods. One of the challenges of, of any 3D modeling software is creating methods of navigation that are intuitive. If you've used more than one uh, modeling application, such as Rhino, SketchUp, or Digital Project, you will know that there is no standard 3D navigation functionality. As is the case with Revit, Autodesk has consistent navigation tools across most of its industry-based applications, such as AutoCAD, Navisworks, and Navisworks. These include the ViewCube tool, the steering wheels tool, and basic mouse controls. You have to know how to control your mouse. You have to keep your pimp hand strong. For lack of a better term, Okay, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. ViewCube. A 3D navigation tool known as the ViewCube is available in most Autodesk design software. This tool will appear by default in the upper right corner of any 3D view. Click any face of the cube to orient the view to that face. Or click a corner of the cube to orient to an axonometric angle, <laughs> the old axe wound. Press and hold the left mouse button while moving the mouse pointer over the view cube to orbit the view freely. Press and hold the left mouse button while hovering over the compass and the view will rotate <laughs> as if it were on a turntable. Columbus was wrong. <laughs> Columbus was wrong. That's the trick. Columbus was wrong. He had ble full bleed in margin. Columbus was wrong. And it was because he probably ate the wrong, the wrong types of olives or something. I don't know what it was. He was close, but no cigar. <laughs> What's that old saying? <laughs> and then... Horseshoes and hand grenades? I don't know. I'm, I'm recovering from PTSD. Still. <laughs> anyway, the view cube allows you to, to, to uh, change your view. The selected tool the view cube or the compass will highlight with a shade of blue when active. I'm going to leave the reference plane on and we'll just show you that 
you, ha you, you have to use this. It's very important. All of these transparencies that we're going to be looking at shortly, you're going to love. This, this is the beauty of it. This is the elegance. This is the elegance around it here. And the intuitiveness of it. Now, all these series of commands and, and grips, if you will, you have to touch with your mouse. And select with your left mouse button. Or you can do it like this, but you don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> all you know is that this is happening. You don't know how I'm doing this without going to the view cube and doing it. And I'll tell you how in a minute. But now first, let's notice the little home icon that is invisible to the naked eye until you hover over it. Until you hover uh, near the view cube, uh, you realize you're still in the doghouse. Try to get near the view cube with your mouse. Oh, oh, wait a second. Look. Look where you are. You can't even get near it. Registered nurse. Look. You can't even get near it. Anyway, that's a whole other story. So, the view cube, again, this and the compass, as you can see, will highlight blue and give you different views, orthographically, uh, within a perspective, and axonometrically. <laughs> <laughs> Axonometrically. Anyway, some folks haven't reached this civilization yet. So I'm trying to take my time. I know folks haven't reached this civilization yet. I quit my job to a certain extent because of that. A 3D navigation tool known as the View Cube is available in most Autodesk design software. Click any face of the cube to orient the view to that face or click a corner of the cube to orient to an axonometric angle. Press and hold the left mouse button while moving the cursor pointer over the view cube to orbit the view freely. Press and hold the left mouse button while hovering over the compass and the view will rotate as if it were on a turntable. The selected tool, Cubert Compass, will highlight with a shade of blue and active. Hovering over the cube with your mouse pointer reveals the home option. The little house above and left of the view cube that you click to return to your home view. Right clicking the view cube opens a menu that allows you to set, save, and orient your view. Selecting options from the context menu takes you directly to the view cube options in the options dialog box, which you can also access in the application menu. The view cube option allows you to customize the placement, transparency, and functional behavior of the tool. So I believe it doesn't give you <laughs> much more information than that and that's unfortunate that's unfortunate this is a mastering series uh, the audacity of them the audacity okay well that's that's a pretty that's a lot of words to just say and you know and then not say anything else about Plumber's elbow. <laughs> Plumber's elbow. My ass crack is hanging out. Plumber's elbow. As you can see, 
holding down the shift as you touch the view cube, you can do that. But if you hold down the mouse wheel to press it with your middle finger and hold down shift at the same time simultaneously, and then just hover around, you've got you got the controls. It's triangulation. You have the controls. If you hold down shift and you hold down the wheel of the mouse, you can see that you can do all sorts of tricks, like the flying Orlandas. Now, if you select something within the model, and then you do the same thing by holding down shift and the wheel, that'll become your center of gravity, your centroid, to a certain extent. That'll be your centroid. So basically what you're doing is you're creating a, a, an invisible sphere around the center of that volume solid primitive, that rectangular solid primitive cube, if you will, it has a center, and you just selected it by doing that. And from that center emits a sphere of an, of a, of an unknown unitless size based on your zoom, based on your zoom. Think of this as Epcot Center. Now, you're on the roof of Epcot Center, selecting the center of, centro of the centroid of the, of the Doppler radar, if you will. And picture yourself on top of that, walking around on a golf, on top of a golf ball. And that's the center of the golf ball, the center of the Earth. And there's an invisible sphere that you can't see. But it's based on your scale factor. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying, man. You know what I'm saying. It's pi r squared, man. Pi r squared. <laughs> Don't be a square, dude. All right. So, steering wheels. Another, <clears throat> another method of navigation that is unique to all this software is the steering wheels tool. This tool can be activated by pressing the F8 key, by pressing Shift plus W, or by using the navigation bar. The steering wheels will follow your mouse pointer as you move around a view and will stop when the mouse movement slows, allowing you to hover the mouse pointer over one of the command areas on the wheel. As you hover the mouse pointer over a navigation um, command, press and hold the left mouse button while moving the mouse to activate the corresponding navigation method. There are many ways to customize the steering wheels, all accessible through the wheel menu. Now, as you hover the mouse pointer over a navigation command, press and hold the left mouse button while moving the mouse to activate the corresponding navigation method. Many ways to do this. Okay, so now, if you come over back by the view cube, you'll look down here, and you'll notice that there is this little, looks like a pick, and there's some other things down here that you may not see. If we expand this down, um, I believe we could, uh, let's see here. Okay, so now, you see this is the steering wheel, full navigation wheel. If you hover over it, it'll give you an explanation. Full navigation wheel provides access to general and specialized 3D, 3D navigation tools. Um, click a wedge, hold and drag to perform a specific navigation action. Release the mouse button to restore the steering wheel. So let's pick on it. And now I just clicked it and I have this steering wheel. Press escape F8 or shift plus W to exit or, or, or right click to display context menu. Or run over here to the modify arrow, which is a very good place. It's almost like escape. When you're in a command, you want to get out of it, sometimes you just sticky fingers. you got to come over here and hit the modify, and it kind of gets you out of the command. Uh, it, it could be cause it enters selection mode. So you can, select some, uh, you can select elements to modify. When you move the cursor over an element, it is highlighted in the description displays in the status bar. Click to select the highlighted element. If you have uh, difficulty highlighting an element because other elements are in close proximity, press tab to cycle through the elements until the desired element uh, element is highlighted, then click to select it. So it's a deselect, select tool plus a tab tool to get you through the 
uh, individual thin and overlay uh, entities that you're drawing and touching. Um, but in this case, I selected the wheel, and here it is. But I can get out of it by doing that. And I can come back over here and do that. And then if you go and you hover over these uh, portions of this opaque wheel, which you can control the opacity of. You can also control the opacity of this. If you look here, uh, I think you can right mouse click. Wait, 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 right here. You can control the opacity. Change the opacity of, of the wheel. 100% opaque. <laughs> and 50% opaque. That's pretty dark, you know, that's pretty good for me. I don't mind that. All right, so in any event, you'll see the steering wheel consists of lots of things. Zoom, orbit, pan, rewind, walk, up, down, look, center. Uh, and then you see the plus button will remove it and put you back. Press shift W to show the wheel again. So again, if you're quick, you're on and off, on and off. Boom, but here's the thing. This thing's sticky. It's sticky. Because now you can still zoom with the wheel on your mouse, but if you press, if you select the zoom, notice the pivot now. Now you've just created a centroid around your pick point. And now look at the quickness at which you can zoom in and out. So now back to the steering wheel, I released it. And if I went to orbit now, and I picked a point, I, the point I pick is now my centroid. And 3D navigation becomes a little easier. Go back to the view uh, of steering wheel, and I hit the pan, and then I select. I can pan left and right and up and down, and freeze the view that I'm looking at to uh, get a better navigation. And within that, then zoom with your wheel on your mouse. You can rewind frames where you were a few moments ago. If you got lost in space, Captain Smith, Captain Smith, you can run back home and call the captain to a certain extent. It's cached. The views are cached. So that's another helpful tool as you're trying to not get lost in the software because you come out of the CAD environment, it's different. You're changing your isoplane. You're changing your isoplane drafting in 3D, uh, extruding in, R in AutoCAD. And it's slightly apparent, only slightly, that you're doing the same thing here. <laughs> slightly apparent. And you can, you can breeze right through it. In any event, um, again, you can rewind these views, pan, zoom. And again, you can see here, you have, if you click this little pull down, just, uh, you can display the wheel menu. And then there's a mini view wheel. Of mini, you can, if you want to do a little guy like that, keep it simple, stupid, you can even do that. It's an it's a enhanced cursor. It's an enhanced cursor to a, a nth degree, exponentially better than most cursors. In any event, Again, if you right mouse click, the mini tour building wheel, good things for, uh, that you can create video walkthroughs. So we're gonna get to all this. Right mouse click again, the mini full navigation wheel, right mouse click again, full navigation wheel, <laughs> basic wheels. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm telling you, I'm not reinventing the wheel. View object wheel. There's the uh, tour building wheel, go home, fit to window, restore original center, orient to view, which is important. You can do this with the view cube as well. And there's other things we can do with the view cube. You can orientate it to a view that you have predetermined. If you see these views that you see from this flyout menu, they're already in the project browser. <laughs> You understand the under, you understand bidirectional associativity, covalence bonds, ionic bonds. It's performance bonding, man. This isn't a joke. I try to make it a joke because it's really difficult. It really is difficult to wrap your mind around. Lost in space. No one to scream out to help. All right, now, orient to plane. Undo view orientation changes, save view, which is very helpful. Now let's do that. 3D ortho one. And let's go back to the settings and close the wheel. And we have options, we have more options. The more data mining you do, the more you'll learn. Now remember in the beginning I told you that there is the options right from the get-go. Right from the get-go I told you from the file pull-down menu 
that you were able to uh, access the options dialog box. And sure enough, within that options dialog box, there's more and more and more stuff. Move parallel to ground plane, you can change the speed factor, zoom in one increment with each mouse click. Always oh, on the basic wheels. I'm sorry. Tool look behavior, or look tool behavior, invert the vertical axis. Now, doing this to people that come in off the street to use the software, and you got these all fucking ass backwards, that's mean, man. That's just mean. And these deviant bastards, they don't know which way is up. Send me the link. Again, I'm not going to get into the all of this, but you can really screw somebody up. Anyway, there's morals to this. There's morals. There's morals. This is really, really deep, man. <laughs> I told you. It's deep. All right, so for you, all you budding students that are interested in this, you got to follow along. I'm not the best at it, but let me tell you, I, I've got some, some experience in it. All right, so I share as much as I can. Now that's really cool, all that stuff's really good. And that's fantastic. <laughs> that's fantastic. Isn't it? Isn't it fantastic? Isn't that what you're supposed to do with fantastic? It's fantastic, isn't it? It's fantastic. All right, now, this, my friends, is something really cool. I right, said, so now you see this view cube that we went around. I grabbed the compass if you want. You can pick the compass, spin it around. You can point it to south, you know, you can point it uh, to east, you can do all those good things. And and there we're going to get to that because there's lots of stuff we have to discuss about how to locate and site plans. Oh, oh man. And we the surveyor set up and things like that. In any event, we'll get to Trimble and all those good things and all the uh, leak uh, laser scanning stuff and point clouds down the road because it gets so much, much more fun. Clash detection. But this view cube is really, really important. Because again, like I said, I mean, if you click the upper portion of the cube, you go to that portion of the building. And, and, and in building coordination, the first thing they're gonna give you is a grid and a, a view, uh, a project cube. And, and that's how you're, you're gonna work with blocks. It's, it's, it's almost getting to a point where it's getting to be idiot proof, the present company included. I'm almost getting good at it. It's idiot proof. So, again, you got to see some of the horror shows I've thrown out there. <laughs> All right, in any event, again, lots of different ways that you can do this, okay? But now, this is what I wanted to show you here on this view cube, because this little, little context menu, within the context of, you can see that you can orient to your view to, for, let's say, we're in an orthographic view right now, let's say perspective. Now, notice how... We're no longer on a 30 degree angle. We're not, we're not on a 30 degree angle anymore. So it's important to note that orthographic and perspective, perspective because of depth, depth perception. Okay, now this is a perspective view of that same 3D. It looks a bit different. Now, if I pull down this view cube again, orient to view, floor plans. Orients of first floor power. Watch what it does. Check this out. Oops. Hold on. Check this out. It just I just told it to orient to the first floor power plant. It just shaved off the entire rest of the building. Isn't that handy? <laughs> Isn't that just handy? <laughs> it's pretty good. Skippy. He decided just to dissect it down to the level that you need to see the detail level that you're at. Now let's go back to the view cube again. Let's orient to view. Let's orient to a, an elevation, the east elevation, shall we? Now, what it's going to do, it's going to think about it for a second. Is it going to do anything? There it is. It's not going to do anything for me. Oops. Actually, yeah, it did exactly that. It oriented to the east elevation. Hold on. I'll do it again. I was zoomed in a little. Let me get this thing cockeyed. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Because it's going to get better in a second. It's going to get better in a couple seconds. You ran out of space. You can orient to each, any floor plan you want and dissect the model down to the level uh, that you can see. It helps. 
You do that with elevations too. I haven't created any sections yet. That's why it spun around. It was there, and I would have been looking straight at it. I could have did this and get the same effect. But what I'm trying to demonstrate to you, and it's getting sucked because of the memory, um, is that if I go to floor plans, and I go up to view, and I decide that I want to look at this riser closet, and I want to look at it this way, and I just create a section view just so you know. Um, you didn't notice it, but it created a section view automatically. If I go to it, that's the section view. It created it automatically for me. So now, going back to this 3D model, right, 3D ortho, if I go back to home and I put this back to a Come here, you. Come here. Use the steering wheel, Mike. Use the steering wheel. Give me a minute. I'm having some lag. Okay, so now, if I go over here, and I go down to Orient to View, and I go to Orient to Sections, Section 1, just, what do you know? Just so happened to be now available to look at in 3D. Now watch what this does. Does it the way I want it to do. <laughs> so now, if you look at this, it sure does want to gravitate that way for some reason today. Now what you got is the section I just cut. I just cut this section. And if you look, hold that thought. Sucking me. I'm experiencing the lag. Now I want to show you something. This is how this is where you, this is where I let you off. This is where I let you off. Bidirectional associativity. It helps drawing riser diagrams. Toodaloo.